guys, finally finished Ignite Val Arc slash Tempest Shield build and it is time for a build guide video. First about this build, then about the items, skills, links and then how I level this character. Time codes also serve as table of contents. First what this build does well and what not so well. This build is my league starter build and I had 0 exalt drops. So this build is very cheap to start but there are some more expensive options. This build is super nice for clearing. I have been using a 4 link level 19 Val Arc all the way until level 88 and it was fine until around tier 11 maps. That's when I upgraded it to 5 link helmet and then continue into higher tier maps. This is a surprisingly tanky build but it isn't a hardcore kind of tanky. I don't play hardcore so you will have to ask someone who does if this could work in a hardcore. Nearly all of my deaths were during scourge encounters but I think this build works super well for new players because even if you don't know what's happening on the screen you will still be able to automatically clear enemies because of tempest shield ignites. I did not try serious fight yet because I got confused about new Atlas rework thinking that I will trigger serious fight at 20 watchstones and I did not want to spend another day grinding before I can make a build guide video. Bossing damage is not the best, however this is pretty tanky build so it makes it pretty reliable build to progress through Atlas maps. Talking about damage I will give you some quick numbers. Val Arc Ignite DPS is 407 without elemental overload since you do need to crit with each skill for it to gain elemental overload. Normal Arc Ignite DPS is 181,000 with elemental overload but I have 120% critical strike chance uh, boots uh, if you haven't crit recently so I get up to around 13% chance to crit. I was playing without elemental overload and it was fine didn't even notice the difference while clearing enemies. Tempest Shield Ignite DPS is 405,000 with elemental overload and 300,000 without it. So Tempest Shield is my main bossing skill. I do not use any awakened gems and most of my gems do not have quality. So damage wise you can definitely get more. There are no required items but there are some item mods that are needed for you to survive this. Because this is a block build but with glancing blows. So I do still take damage when blocking. By the way you cannot trigger block with self damage. So essentially you want enemies to hit you so you can apply strong ignites. You can of course use Val Arc because it gains 15% more damage per remaining chain but you're not going to recharge it very quickly against single enemy and one ignite is not going to one shot bosses unless of course you invest a lot more into this build. When it comes to defensive layers there are multiple. If I play this build for another week or so I would experiment with different options and probably improve it quite a bit more. But our 5.9 thousand life I currently have 4.6k armor but it goes higher by a lot during combat. I have some life regeneration, 30% of damage taken recoup as life. I have life gain on block, recover 2% life when I ignite a non-ignited enemy. Primal Aegis which absorbs elemental damage, free endurance charges, 74% attack block and 75% spell block without any flasks and immune to shocks thanks to Tempest Shield. My chaos resistance however is still in the negative but with 4 more passive points or I guess 2 more passive points if I refund 2 I would take chaos resistance nodes and also reduce curse effect on me. Did not upgrade any Pantheon powers, took soul of the Brand King against stuns and uh, soul of uh, Rislatas to recover life flask which I barely use. Now skills and links quickly but I am going to expand that uh, while talking about items. While Arc Inside Demon or Arch Demon Helmet linked with Combustion, Inspiration and Ignite Proliferation. Tempest Shield in Body Armor linked with Ignite Proliferation and Bound Ailments. Added Lighting Damage, Burning Damage and Inspiration. I picked these specifically because uh, of low mana multiplier. Because Tempest Shield reserves 25% of your mana before other multipliers and I want to also squeeze in Malevolence Aura. And no, Anger Aura does not give you more damage than Malevolence Aura. If you can get Awakened Gems of course do so. Enduring Cry linked with Life Tap and Second Wind to generate Endurance Charges and to heal you. Level 1 Caspian Damage taken linked with Level 1 Wave of Conviction and Level 1 Flame Surge and Combustion. Uh, this is to automate things and Wave of Conviction is uh, debuffing enemies with minus 15% exposure and uh, new flame surge applies like a burning ground based on ignite. I chose Molten Shell just because it gives decent chunk of flat armor but I'm not sure if it is any better than steel skin. Molten Shell is linked with Arcane Surge and Flame Dash. This is just to give me a bit more mana regeneration because casting damage taken spells can drain mana pretty fast. Now items. This surrender shield is not mandatory 
and I paid around I believe 140 years early in the league. It does have 250 flat life gained on block, high block chance and decent amount of armor, especially after blocking. It also gives reckoning counter attack but I am only using it for life gain on hit. I had to link it with additional accuracy because as a spellcaster I don't have good hit chance. Alternative shield would be Shaper's armor base shield with 5% uh, recover life on block and high block chance. There are lots of other good mods but it can be very very expensive if you want other good mods. For body armor any 6 link will do but you don't need to rush for 6 link. As long as you get a lot of life, ideally you want Wallace's body armor with plus 1 active skill gems and endurance charge generation but I was not lucky enough to roll those mods. By the way, if you don't know, easy way of getting 6 link items is using tainted fusings. I suggest you get a body armor that requires strength and int, that way it is easier to get the right color sockets. Get a 6 socket, either 5 link them or just a 4 link, either corrupt it using Val Orb which has a high chance of totally ruining your item or use Scorch for sort of safely corrupting it. Just make sure you do not roll like bad scorch modifiers, something like plus 100 dexterity requirement would be very bad because you don't have a lot of dex. After corrupting by the armor you can use tainted fusings. It will either remove one link or add one link. If you have 6 sockets, 5 linked armor, it will either become 6 link right away or drop it to 4 link. If it drops to 4 link, use tainted fusing again. If it drops to 3 link, then you will have to use benchcraft to make it 4 link again before using tainted fusings, continue until 6 link. For me it only took 3 tainted fusings to turn 5 link into a 6 link. And I was using a 4 link body armor for a very long time before I got my 6 link. For helmet there are a couple options, I have been using demon crown with 4 linked val arc all the way until retir maps. Demon crown requires lower level so you can use it early on. Arch demon crown requires level 75. I like this crown because socketed skills will apply all 3 elemental exposures and debuff enemies with minus 10% to all elemental resistances. This also means that you, you do not need to hit enemies with other spells to apply exposure and with this setup when I use arc I lower enemy fire resistance by 45% and that is not counting from a built debuff. You could use Stabilizing Scepter which has Elemental Equilibrium as implicit and Elemental Equilibrium has been reworked into Exposure. However, the way it works, if you hit with Lighting Damage, it will remove Lighting Exposure and apply Cold and Fire Exposure, which normally may not be very important. But you also have to avoid any flat fire damage to spells because if you hit with fire damage it will remove fire exposure. This scepter by the way applies minus 25% exposure compared to minus 10 from the helmet or minus 15% from wave of conviction. So it is much stronger exposure but it may be very difficult to get a good stabilizing scepter. And one more drawback would be that losing lighting exposure also means your hit damage would be lower meaning that you would apply weaker shocks. So as you can see this arch demon does have a lot of benefits for a very cheap price. And ideally you would want to add elders influence to this uh, helmet and use essence of horror to get socketed gems deal 30% more elemental damage and hope that you also roll socketed gems are supported by burning damage support. And if you are super lucky maybe some flat physical or fire damage to spells. And one step further we could get a scourge modifier which does give plus 1 to level of socketed intelligence gems. Yeah good luck with that. So as you can see there are some very expensive options and uh, now you see my helmet. It has nothing but life and essence craft. And this isn't the first time I tried to craft it. I actually wasted I believe almost 2 exalts trying to craft something. This is what I end up with. Weapon, I already mentioned expensive option if you go for stabilizing scepter but my current weapon was around 30-40 years. The main two things that you want is uh, plus 1 to lighting spell skill gems and fire damage over time multiplier. Other modifiers can be flare damage to spells, increase fire damage, increase lighting damage. Lighting damage does increase your ignite damage because you are hitting enemies with lighting damage and all damage can ignite if you are elementalist. Gloves, Shaper and Hunter influence gloves can roll 5 damage over time multiplier and that is pretty much all when it comes to gloves. It can be incursion gloves with flat fire damage but flat fire damage in general is not as good as fire damage over time multiplier. As for boots you can get faster ignite boots but I'm broke so I just got these from Syndicate with good life, resistance as movement speed, increased effect of non-damaging ailments help you apply stronger shocks. 
So essentially this mod also gives you damage but against normal enemies you should be able to apply 50% shock anyway. Otherwise Hunter Influence Boots can get Ignite to inflict deal damage faster. Amulet can give you a lot of damage plus 1 Lightning Skill Gems, Crusader's Influence or plus 1 Intelligence Skill Gems which is Hunter Influence, Fire Damage Over Time Multiplier or Generic Damage Over Time Multiplier. Or if you're lucky or rich, plus 1 to Gems and Fire.Multi. Oh and you may want some Dexterity on Amulet as well. Anointed Searing Heat for fast ignites but you may also anoint something defensive like plus 2 to maximum all resistances or enduring charge generation or block. One ring is pretty important to get full mobility on hit ring with some resistances preferably and of course flat life. Another ring can be either defensive or more offensive with either fire or lightning damage or flat damage to spells. Belt may need some strength, other than that it is mostly defensive modifiers. Uh, Stitch and wise could be great if you have bigger budget. For Flask I picked Sulphur because it gives damage and Consecrated Ground gives regeneration and it reduces Curse effect while on Consecrated Ground. Granite for more armor and Aquamarine to counter the freezes. Life Flask as always I like rolling with Anti Bleed. Now Passive Skill Tree. This is level 91 for Bandits Defeat All for extra passive points. As Elementalist first thing I took was Shaper of Flames that allowed me to start using Arc early on. Other points in no particular order, Shaper of Storms, Mastermind of Discord and Bastion of Elements. I did not bother with golems and I don't know how golem setups would look like and you would also need more sockets. Heart of Destruction gives damage buff but uh, for 4 seconds but the downtime is 4 seconds so it's not 100% uptime. As for the rest of the passive skill tree, early on I went up through critical nodes thinking that I will want that extra critical strike chance to help proc elemental overload. But later I refunded those points and there are many notes that I want to take but in the end you have to decide what you want more and sacrifice something. I will mention important masteries and if you are a new player I will also talk about leveling and progression in a minute. Mastery points. How I am able to run 50% aura and 25% on a 6th link is just one wheel on the tree. Picking up a reservation mastery for additional 15% reservation efficiency. The rest is up to support gems with as low as possible mana multiplier. One fire mastery for 20% fire dot multiplier. A number for cover enemies in ash when they hit you. Fat fire mastery recover 2% life when you ignite a non-ignited enemy. Lighting Master is probably going to cause some debate but I can assure you that lucky damage does not affect Ignite. If you do not believe me you can search for explanation from GG or other community members. In simple terms lucky lighting damage is not Ignite. So from Lighting Master I pick plus one chain. From Life Master I pretty much only took a flat 50 life. Block Mastery not to be confused with Shield Mastery. Block Mastery has flat 20 life and mana on block. This helps a lot at sustaining your mana. And Safeguard Node also recovers 50 energy shield on spell block. I even went for Armor Mastery which also have some nodes with life. For Armor Mastery I picked 100% increased armor from equipped shield since my shield has over 1000 armor. It is hard to choose because it has some other good options. So you may want to experiment and it depends on your shield. Damage over time and shield masters I picked last because I had nothing else impactful for 2 passive points. But in 2 more levels I would refund those 2 masters and go for asylum and its mastery. Getting chaos resistance and curse reduction. And you would probably want this early on to help you against maps with curses. A quick thing to note elemental mastery has exposure you inflict applies at at least minus 18% to the affected uh, resistance. It is not suited for elementalists or anyone who applies stronger exposure. As elementalists you get an extra minus 25% exposure debuff on top of minus 10% from helmet. So this does nothing for you. There is another fire mastery however but it is a bit too far. You may also want to get another minus 5% extra exposure or pick that instead of uh, cover enemies in ash. That pretty much covers the build. Now if you are a newer player and want some guidance on how to progress this then keep watching and for the rest of you thank you for watching and I don't have a plan for the next build so if you got some cool ideas leave them in the comments below. From early levels I was using fireball linked with elemental proliferation. Later you can replace it with armageddon brand or firestorm or whatever other fire spell. Just use combustion to get more chance to ignite. From passive tree early on you want to grab life and mana nodes near which starting area. From there you may want to go up towards fire mastery. 
getting damage over time nodes along the way and uh, either getting a couple more life nodes or go straight for fire mastery on the left. Then more life nodes, then more fire nodes, then more life nodes. I picked up the recoup nodes early on, then uh, moved down below which starting area towards elemental nodes, then more life. At some points you may want to start using temper shield. You can do that sooner but it may slow down your leveling if instead uh, of damage nodes you are rushing towards glancing blows and uh, pick up some block nodes. Once uh, you pick up Glancing Blows, there is another Fire Master below it and a bunch of uh, more life nodes nearby. From there, fill up the rest. Pick up Lighting Mastery, Reservation Efficiency, more Block, more Armor or Curse eff Effect Reduction. In general, for most builds, you want to get life on every equipment and get over 170% life from the passive skill tree, unless you are using Mind Over Matter, but that is a very different build. When upgrading your items, get Demon Crown Helmet and uh, place Val Ark in there, link with uh, same support gems that I mentioned in this video. Don't rush for 6 link body armor, that won't be a big overall upgrade. Get low mobility on hit ring, uh, which can be at around level 55-60, a decent shield with recovery life on block, decent weapon, then gloves with fire damage over time multiplier. Getting over 75% elemental resistance is very important because after Act 5 and Act 10 you lose more and more resistances. So life and resistances on all items if possible. Namaho Sign Ring is uh, good early on before you get good shield or and more life. Recover life each time you ignite is pretty strong. I was using it until around level 8 I think. Uh, that's when I upgraded it to Opal Ring for more damage. Upgrade Amulet with Anointment near the end and you may need Dexterity so Amulet is a good place to get it. That should get you on track. If you are playing Chieftain for example and want to try this, you can do it by getting Stormfire Ring and trying to adapt the passive skill tree. Trickster may also work but damage would be lower with Trickster. So that is all. This was my favorite league starter ever and I did not expect to enjoy it so much but it is time for me to start working on some next build. If you are new on my channel and lasted this long, definitely subscribe because I am sure you will like my other videos as well. I'm going to start doing more experimental builds so at some point you're gonna see less viable builds but nonetheless interesting builds. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.